Ever wondered how the arbitrary lines on Africa's map came into existence? A thought that might have crossed your mind as you gazed at the continent's oddly drawn boundaries. Indeed, the answer lies not in geographical logic, but in a historical event. A gathering of nations in the heart of Europe, the Berlin Conference. This momentous meeting in the 19th century continues to shape Africa's destiny even today. To understand the present, we must delve into the past. So, let's travel back to the year 1884. The year is 1884, a time when Africa was mostly unknown to the outside world. It's an era marked by the rapid expansion of European imperialism, fueled by an insatiable hunger for power and resources. Africa, with its vast untapped wealth, was the prime target. European powers like Britain, France and Germany were in a mad dash to claim their share of the African pie. This scramble for Africa was no gentlemanly competition. It was a ruthless race, driven by political rivalry and economic greed. Amidst this chaos, Otto von Bismarck, the Chancellor of Germany, saw an opportunity. He envisioned a peaceful negotiation among the European powers to divide Africa. His proposal was simple. Let's sit around a table, draw lines on a map and carve up Africa. He invited nations to Berlin with this very purpose in mind. Thus, the stage was set for the Berlin Conference, a meeting that would forever change the face of Africa. The Berlin Conference, a gathering of 14 nations, none of them African, ready to carve up a continent. It was the winter of 1884, and these nations convened in the heart of Germany with a single objective, to divide Africa like a pie, with no slice left untouched. King Leopold II of Belgium had begun to claim the Congo Basin, sparking fears of a continental free-for-all. To avoid conflict, German Chancellor Otto von Bismarck called the conference to establish rules for the partition. This was no altruistic gesture, but a cunning strategy to secure Germany's own slice. Over the following months, diplomats haggled over maps, drawing arbitrary lines that bore little regard for the complex tapestry of cultures, languages and societies that made up Africa. The continent was reduced to a chessboard, its territories mere squares to be claimed and traded. The main outcome of this conference was the General Act of the Berlin Conference. This document, signed in February 1885, set the framework for the scramble for Africa. It declared that European powers could claim African land only if they established effective occupation. This term, vague and open to interpretation, was a green light for imperial expansion. Under the guise of civilizing missions, these powers seized vast swathes of land, exploiting resources and imposing their own systems of governance, education and religion. The indigenous populations were stripped of their autonomy, their identities systematically erased or subjugated. The Berlin Conference was a masterclass in diplomatic hypocrisy. While the attendees professed a commitment to ending the slave trade, their actions entrenched a new form of slavery. The scramble for Africa was not just a territorial conquest, but a cultural and economic one, ripping apart the fabric of African societies and leaving a legacy of division and conflict that lingers to this day. And so, by the end of the Berlin Conference, Africa had been divided, its fate sealed by a room full of foreigners. The consequences of the Berlin Conference reverberate to this day. The aftermath of this monumental event was profound and long-lasting, shaping the face of the African continent in ways that still impact its people. The conference's arbitrary boundaries, drawn without regard for ethnic, linguistic or cultural divisions, sowed the seeds of numerous conflicts. Tribes and communities were split apart or forced together, leading to tension and strife that persist in many areas. Moreover, the colonial legacy left in the wake of the conference continues to influence Africa. The exploitation of resources, the imposition of foreign systems and values, and the disruption of traditional societies have left indelible marks. Even after the end of colonial rule, the effects of these actions can be seen in socio-economic challenges, political instability, and struggles for identity and autonomy. Indeed, the Berlin Conference was not just an event, it was a process that shaped Africa's destiny. So, what have we learned today? We've delved into the Berlin Conference, a pivotal event that carved up Africa, forever altering its landscape. 
We've seen how European powers, driven by their own interests, divided a continent, leaving a legacy of territorial disputes and socio-economic challenges. The implications of this historical episode still ripple through Africa today. The Berlin Conference serves as a stark reminder of a past we must not forget. For it is in understanding our past that we can better shape our future.